facts and old. But under the big top, you can see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungles. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here, then, is a strange, unearthly adventure which Mr. Beatty calls Zombie. My wife Harriet and I, in West Indian ports pursuing our favorite sport of deep sea fishing, had heard talk of zombies. But it wasn't until we visited St. Lucia in the British West Indies to hunt the seven-foot venomous killer snake, the Fer de Lance, for exhibition with our wild animal circus that one morning. All right, now let's see. Ho oh, there, boys. Ho. Oh. Now, let's check the things over, Harriet. Bat nets. Snake hooks. Strapped here on the pack horse, Clyde. Okay. And the anti-venom kit? Got it right here. <laughs> you better let me carry it, honey. You'll have your hands full with Mr. Misery. He's going along with us, isn't he? Mr. Anderson's bringing him down from the plantation house when he comes. But the way those two have been getting along, Clyde, Mr. Misery's likely to prefer to ride with him. <laughs> you may be right. Look, they're coming from the house now. <laughs> oh, Clyde, look how Mr. Misery studies Mr. Anderson's face. As if he understood every word. Ah, and the Capuchin monkey's supposed to hate human beings. Well, now, Mr. Misery, we should all have a jolly good early morning horseback ride, what? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And a stock of sugar cane is a reward. Good morning. All ready to start off, I see. Oh, yes. We've just been checking over the equipment, Mr. Anderson. Well, you know, as I told you, the set of dance has been all but wiped out through these islands. Oh, I think we'll round up a specimen or two. I hope so, Beatty. Since you seem set on having some of the beggars, shall we set off then? Okay. We're all ready. I'm afraid, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Misery would really rather ride on your horse with you. <laughs> Thicker and brighter, isn't he? But I, I think, Mrs. Daisy, I'd best keep my hands free. Well, is it really likely anything might happen, Anson? You carry your precaution. The anti-venom kit you hold in your hands. I have here across my saddle my precaution. This 30-30 Craig rifle. As I told you at dinner last evening, Daisy, these West Indian islands are a string of powder boxes from Cuba to the South American coast. Well, it seems peaceful enough. Yes, indeed. And in just such peaceful surroundings, I... I don't mean to frighten you, Mrs. Beatty, but you seem a sturdy sort. In just what surroundings, here in St. Lucia, planters, and in Trinidad oil fields, overseers, have been seized and murdered. Clyde, look. Around this turn in the road. A big crowd. What are they up to, Anson? I don't know, Beatty. Come now. We'll just ride straight along. They'll make way. Be quiet, Mr. Misery. Now, hush. Yeah, the crowd's separating. Clearing the center of the road. Except... Hurry. Mr. that girl ahead of us. Ah, she won't budge at any rate. Light look at her. Her eyes empty as if... As if she were dead. Quite. That is a girl named Martha Brown. Or was, as some would have it. Was, Mr. Amsterdam? Yes, you see, many say that Martha Brown is a zombie. A risen member of the colony of the dead... Well, come along. We must ride round her. We return to our strange West Indian story, Zombie, in a moment. Back to Clyde Beatty and our story... Zombie. We passed the girl, Martha Brown, gazing with vacant, sightless eyes, standing unheeding in the middle of the road. We rode on. 
on between the 12-foot-high walls of sugar cane, and quite soon a tall man, sunburned, hatless, about 15 years younger than our host, Anson, appeared ahead. He waved cheerfully and rode up to us. Top of the morning, I say. Out for the breeze so early, are we? Morning. Oh, uh, this is Johannes van Eckert. Has the sugar plantation next to mine. How do you do, Mr. Van Eckert? How do you do? Uh, this is Mrs. Beatty van Eckert. Hello. And Clyde Beatty. I'm happy to know you, Beatty. Hello. Mr. and Mrs. Beatty are wild animal trainers. They have a circus in the United States. Oh, yes. I know the Beatty's. They hope to take specimens of the fair de lance for exhibition. Well, then that accounts for all that gear you have aboard. Oh, Mr. Van Eckert, this is Mr. Misery. Hello there. <laughs> Sorry face, Chad, isn't it? <laughs> we think so. That's the reason for his name. Well, it suits all right. I, uh, I've told Mr. and Mrs. Beatty the mongoose has all but eliminated the fair lance from St. Lucia. Hold on, though. What is it, Mr. Van Eckert? I just thought. Well, I'm a bachelor, you know, and, uh, and the fact is I don't keep my digs just one one might call ship shape. Let refuse pile up and that sort of thing. Well, to tell the truth, we've attracted rodents with the mess. Rats and mice yes. and... Uh, just lately, they've been disappearing. That could be the work of the Fair de Lance. They feed on rats and mice, Mr. Van Eckert. Yes, so I've heard. Well, if you don't have luck this morning, why not come round and give my place a go this afternoon? Well, thanks, Van Eckert. We might do that. Oh, and I say, bring a swimsuit. I have a sort of a water hole that serves for a pool. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a sissy, honey. Had enough, you two? Oh, I'm through. How about you, Harriet? Yes, yes, quick, before my husband drowns me. <laughs> Here you are, Mrs. Beatty. I'll give you a hand up. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rennick. Oh, the sun feels good. I'm sorry, Beatty, we failed to turn up your third alarm. <laughs> I'm beginning to believe there really aren't any on St. Lucia. We've hunted my place over thoroughly enough this afternoon. And we combed the cane fields this morning. You know, it's too bad Amsden decided not to come along with you to my place. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I'm sorry Mr. Mithery's missing. Oh, well, he simply refuses to be separated from Mr. Amsden. What precisely did Amsden say, Bertie? Uh, that is, if you don't mind. He said, convey my apologies to mine here, Van Eckert. Mine here, eh? Oh, that was the barb. You see, I'm an Afrikander. Born so, anyhow. Out in the Transvaal, South Africa. A South African Dutchman. A boy, you see. Though I haven't been back for years. I suppose Amsden doesn't consider me a proper Englishman. Well, that seems a little stiff-necked of him. Well, it doesn't seem like Mr. Amsden at all. Then, of course, there's the business of Mrs. Amsden. You've not met her? No, we haven't. She's over in Martinique. Mm, she would be, you know. Spends three quarters of her time there nowadays. Hard lines for poor old Amsden. Josette. His wife? Yeah, Josette Amsden. Uh, she's a Martinique. Uh, Fifteen or sixteen years Amsden junior, that sort of thing. Clyde. Clyde. What is it, honey? Look. Look for the stream that leads into the pool on that low rock there. That's a fair de lance. Our equipment was 30 feet away on the brick floor of the gallery of Van Eckert's plantation house. We moved for it quietly. Cautiously, we made our way back. The fair de lance still sunned itself on the rock. Six feet long, reddish colored with triangular markings, the head distinctly shaped like the head of a lance. Iron Lance Head, the English meaning of Fair de Lance, the deadly snake's French Creole name. Here's the snake, oh, All right, Harriet. Then I get... Yes, sir. How would you like to take him? I wouldn't know what to do. I'll tell you. Take one of the bat nets. Yes? Take one too, Harriet. Stand by in case Van Eckert needs help. All right, Clark. Now, look here, baby. I, I wouldn't want to be the cause of your losing him. You won't. Now, come on. Just easy low so we won't scare him off. Mm. Now, when we're in range, I'll reach under him with the end of his snake hook and lift. But the snake won't slip off? He'll coil himself around the hook at the end of his pole. They always do. Then you reach under with your pole with the bat net at the end. Uh, very well. I understand. And I'll tip him into your net. 
Do you work that lever there along the side of your pole, closing the mouth of your net, and the fair de lance is bagged? That's all there'll be to it? That's all. Ready now? Yes. Yes, uh, so far as I'm likely to be. Stand by, Harry. Yes, Clark. All right, here goes. Hook. Under the middle cord. Lift. All right, now, quick. Under him with that bat net, Benneke. Right, oh, hurry. Hurry, keep him right, so, right, so. There. There, he's in. Now, shut the net. Shut it. Oh, you got him, Mr. Benneke. Uh, we might step out on the gallery to digest our dinners, Daisy, Mrs. Daisy. Rather cooler out there. Pleasant this time of evening. It was a lovely dinner, Mr. Anderson. Oh, it's kind of you, Mrs. Daisy, to compliment the dinner. But I fear my hospitality in the absence of Mrs. Anderson leaves something to be desired. No, on the contrary, Mr. Anderson. Oh, Josette will be back quite soon, of course. Uh, something must have turned up uh, unexpectedly over in Martinique and detained her. Ah, now we can sit down. Uh, now that you have your fair de lance, Perhaps you'll be leaving St. Lucia, Beatty. Oh, pretty soon, I suppose. I say, Beatty, don't you have to feed that snake out there in its box? <laughs> we'll round up some live frogs for it in the morning. Meantime, it'll be safe enough. The snake box is securely fastened. Yes, yes. And our poor inquisitive Mr. Misery chained up. Mr. Anderson. Yes? Those drums. Ah, the voodoo drums. Uh, have you and your husband seen a voodoo ceremony? No, we never have. Suppose then we put on some mosquito boots, take a walk across through the cane. Matter of fact, I have a particular reason for looking in on the voodoo people. I don't know if you know much about voodoo. Not very much, Hanson. It's not native to the Western world, of course. It came with the slaves out of Dahomey, chiefly, and adjacent to Shanti along the Guinea coast of West Africa. I didn't think voodoo had spread as far south as here in the Windward Islands. Precisely, precisely, Beatty. I don't think I understand you. It had not. Until quite lately. Coincident, Beatty, with our uprisings and troubles over the island. Oh, I see. Yes, I see. Do you mean you think there's a connection, Mr. Anderson? Voodoo is a passionate, animistic religion, suited to stirring up simple peoples, and by capturing their credulity, holding them in sway. Yes, yes, we found that in Africa. The witch doctors worked on the simple imaginations of the people to gain power. The power they had in some of the more primitive parts of Africa was really terrifying. You said back at the house you had a particular reason, Anderson, for looking in on the voodoo ceremony. Quite. There's a story given very wide credence here about that the white... Hold on a moment. Keep quiet. What? What's the matter? Something wrong? Shh, shh. Don't move. Watch. Someone coming toward us from the direction of the drums. You can just... You can just make out his face in the moonlight. Indeed. You can indeed. No, he's turning away now. Going off to the left. But it... Why, it's only Mr. Van Ecker. Shh, shh. But we ought to call him. Let him go. Well, I don't understand. I don't get it, Anston. I uh, had not finished my sentence when Van Eckert appeared. No. Well, what were you going to say? This. There's a story given very wide credence hereabouts that a white man is behind the unexpected appearance of voodoo, behind the recent troubles and uprisings. In short... That he is a power, lustful agitator of the subtlest and most dangerous kind. And you think it's Van Eckert? I do, Beatty. I'm convinced of it. And now, here is an important message. And now, back to the West Indian story, Zombie. Tonight's thrilling Clyde Beatty drama. Harriet, Amsden, and I stood at the edge of the open-sided, roofed-over area called the Voodoo Tunnel. Watched the slatternly, glassy-eyed dancers. Watched their leaders sprinkle cornmeal in weaving patterns on the ground. Listened to the vibration, the boom of the tree-trunk, hollowed, goat-skin-headed, heels-of-hand-struck radar drums. 
Harriet and I didn't have much heart for what we saw. You want to go, honey? Yes. I can't believe it, Mr. Vanek. Anson, Harriet and I are ready to go now, if you are. As we came out of the cane into the cleared area below Anson's sprawling plantation house, we nearly walked into someone standing in the pool of shadow spread by a flame tree. Oh, oh. oh I almost jumped in. A native girl. Quiet. Quiet. Yes. Yes, transfixed. Staring. Yes. It is Martha Brown. Martha Brown, the young native girl said by many a St. Lucian to be a zombie. Said by many a St. Lucian to be a dehumanized, soulless, walking dead girl. Gazed with great, open, fixed eyes that dully reflected the sheen of the moon. But she did not see us. Can she... Mr. Anderson, will she speak? We can try. Miss Brown. Martha Brown. Martha Brown. Martha Brown. Well, she'll be all right down there in the bungalow now. Nothing we can do for her. She doesn't see or hear us. A doctor ought to see her in the morning. Yes, yes. Well, if you'll forgive me, I find I'm quite exhausted. Oh, I'm awfully tired, too, Clyde. Oh, that makes three of us. Yeah, first we turn in. Good night. Good night, Mr. Amston. Cherie, so you come home at last. Josette. Certainly, Josette. You were expecting another woman, my husband? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beatty, this is my wife, uh, Mrs. Amston. How do you do? Hello. You remember, Josette, uh, the Beatties were coming as our yes, guests. Of course uh... I remember. How do you do, madame, Monsieur Beatty? I am enchanted. Well, thank you, Mrs. Amston. And naturally, we know all about your great work with the wild animals. The famous circus, your fabulous career in the United States. How oh, well, mes amis, as my husband will have made you to know, we are most happy to have your guest. Thank you. You're very kind, Mrs. Amster. Oh, dear. Oh, mon cher, I am exhausted. The boat, the crossing from Fort de France, the whole day, the sea. Mm. Hmm. Well, you uh, want to rest then, Josette. Uh, we were just saying good night, anyhow. Then we shall all meet again in the morning. Oh, yes. Good night, Mrs. Amston. Mr. Amson. Good night. But you are not going to the bungalow? No. No, no, they're staying in the house, uh, the rear bedroom. They are not staying in the bungalow. No, Josette. Why? Nothing. Nothing. Harriet and I had hardly more than slipped in under the mosquito netting, tucked it back in again around the mattress edge when we were asleep. And then, in the middle of the night... Lizzie! Lizzie! Come at once! Hurry! It was at the door. In five seconds, I was with him. A yard boy had been awakened by a scream from the bungalow near the house. Amsden, with his crag rifle, had rushed to the bungalow, had seen the fair de lance slipping out the open door. He dashed it to oblivion with a single blow of his rifle stock. Inside the bungalow on the bed, writhing, was Martha Brown, the awakened zombie. Oh. All right. All right, Harriet. Hurry and get the antivenin kit open. Oh, yes, Clyde. Clyde. Here you are. <clears throat> Turn the kit first. Oh, here. Here, please. Hold her leg still, will you, Amsden? Right. Fair de Lance bit her here in the fat of the leg calf. Could be worse. All right, Anton. Tighten the tourniquet while I get ready to incise the bite. Right, right. The scalpel, Harry. Oh, here. Uh, don't wind the tourniquet too tight, Anton. No. No, we don't want to cut off the flow of the blood. Just slow it down. Very well, I understand. Harry, hold her leg while I make the incision. Oh, all right. Steady now. Oh. Uh, that'll do it. You know, she's no zombie now. She's unconscious, but she felt that. She certainly did seem to. Harriet? Oh, serum next? No, suction cup. Oh, here, Clyde. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can inject the antivenin serum, honey, while I handle this. Mm-hmm. Above the tourniquet. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, you know that, don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh. Well, there's a chance we may be able to save her now. Could work, Daisy. And if she does come out of it, I think there's a good chance she'll prove a theory of mine about zombies. This particular zombie, anyhow. Uh, 
Harriet, if you've finished your coffee... Yes, Clark? Will you do as I asked you on the way up from the bungalow? Oh, yes. Excuse me, Mr. Anderson. Of course. Uh, another cup, baby? You certainly earned it. Those hours and hours of caring for that poor girl. Well, half a cup. That's fine. Thanks, Anderson. I should never have imagined one had to apply suction to a snake bite for many hours. Well, I have to be sure you get all the poison out. Uh, you said, Beatty, that that girl, if she survived might prove some idea of yours about zombies. Yeah, well, she did prove it. Indeed? After you came back up here to the house an hour or so ago, she came to talk to us. I say, did she? She's certainly not a zombie. If there is such a thing as a zombie, which I guess I'm just a little too much Ohio brought up to believe. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> that girl was suffering from a form of catalepsy. Of course. I should have thought. That accounts perfectly And well. the shock of the snake bite brought her out of it. His electric or insulin shock often revives a cataleptic mental patient in a hospital. With the right rest and care, she may recover completely. As if back from among the dead, Beatty. From among the walking dead, the zombies at least. Or so the voodoo people around here are going to think. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Beatty, has it struck you as odd that that snake of yours should have been able to escape its box? I checked the box hooks. They were all fastened. Oh, Oh, forgive me, then. I'd, I'd had a thought, uh, but, but evidently... Since uh, the box hooks were fastened and the fair de lance was out, somebody must have let it out and then shut the box again. Of course. Of course. Beatty, if someone had been playing upon the credulity of the country folk, uh, voodoo, a zombie, that sort of thing, and suddenly he had reason to fear a major part of his trickery was about to be unmarked... You mean Van Eck at Amston? I do. You mean that if he were the white agitator said to operate in these parts, stirring up the natives, working on their superstitious minds, the apparent zombie might have been part of his equipment. Yes. And he'd go to the length of loosing my fair de lance to bite and kill her to prevent us from discovering and letting the community know that she was no zombie. Anthony, yes, Beatty. What I've got to say isn't going to be easy for me to say. But go ahead, Beatty. There's no agitator, Van Eckert or anyone else. That story's a rumor. A rumor, Anston, and nothing more. The uprisings here, the sudden turn to superstition and primitivism on the part of the natives, it's all part of the tension and upheaval that's gripping the whole world. How can you know this so surely, Betty? I told you we talked to Martha Brown. Yes, you did. Well, one of the characteristics of catalepsy is that the cataleptic, while apparently unaware of the world, sees, hears, and remembers all that goes on around him. Well, Martha Brown was exhibited at the voodoo ceremonies. In fact, wandered here to your place somehow from the one last night. I see. And so knew that the voodoo business was purely spontaneous and native. Yep. And she saw who brought the snake box to her bungalow door last night and let loose my fair de long What? That's right. Well, Harriet? Drop this card here. A uh, note. I say that note paper's my wife's. Beatty, what's this all about? I want you to know, Anson, this isn't easy for me. For my wife, either. Well, uh, well very well, but, but what... Read uh, this note. I have run away very early this morning. Shall he and I am to take the morning boat to Martinique. Is it possible you can believe that I love you, Josette? You see, evidently your wife didn't know who Martha Brown was and when she found her in the bungalow last night. Jealousy. She meant to kill Martha Brown. Oh, no. Josette, my Josette. Martha will live, Amston. Josette may have meant to kill her, but instead, she brought her back from the living dead. Well, it's a show for Anton and me now. She's about to pull out. Goodbye, Van Eckert. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, so long, then, chap. And good hunting over there in Martinique. They have a jolly lot more fair de lance than we have here, thank heavens. Come along, Anson. In a moment. I'll wait for you ashore. Cheerio, Beatty. Mrs. Beatty. All the best. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Anson. Goodbye, Harriet, if I may call you that. Oh, of course. <laughs> and goodbye, little black-bearded blighter. Mr. Anson, look, Mr. Misery wants to stay behind with you. Would you accept him with pride in my warmest good wishes? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Harriet, very much. Well, so long, old man. Uh, Clyde, uh, when you're over there in Martinique, you might look up a... Uh, no, 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 let it pass. It's for the best. It's better this way. Goodbye, Clyde. Goodbye, Anthony. 
Goodbye, Harriet. Goodbye. And goodbye, Mr. Misery. Well, here we go, honey. That shape on the horizon over there, that's Martinique. It's not far. No. No. And yet in another way, Clyde, thinking of Mr. Amston and his wife, British St. Lucia and French Martinique are a long way apart. A long way apart. this strange experience, but Clyde Beatty will return in a moment. Once more, here is the star of our show, Clyde Beatty. Next week, I bring you the story of the amazing things that happened when I attempted to give a benefit performance for crippled children in opposition to the wishes of a political boss. What followed was like an exciting chess game with people for pawns and all New England for a chessboard. A game that ended with quite a surprise. I think you'll enjoy it. All stories are based upon incidents in the career of the world's famous Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show is produced by Shirley Thomas. Zombie was written by William Fifield. All names used were fictional. And any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. (laughs) 